Um, and Motazim asks a question. Um, okay, what happens if the evaporator does not get good airflow? Uh, yeah, one of my sort of favorite topics, I think, is uh, airflow. Let's just, uh, probably let's do it on the whiteboard again. Um, actually, we can keep that, uh, that picture up there a little bit. Let's just get rid of our capacities. So if we've got our refrigeration system, we've got our compressor, we've got our condenser, we've got our uh, evap, we've got a fan on our condenser, and we've got a fan on our evaporator. If we don't get good airflow on the evaporator, basically the suction pressure coming back to our machine is going to fall. And the reason it falls is because we're not providing that heat exchange on our evaporator. So the machine will, suction pressure will fall and the evaporator will ice up basically. So we get less capacity from our machine. Um, airflow can happen for, you know, many, many, many reasons. Um, probably the most common is storage issues within the cold room itself. So again, just looking at our, you know, nice, simple cold room. If we have our evaporator where it should be, um, rule of thumb generally is that that dimension of our evaporator should be that dimension of our evaporator so that we get good airflow at the back of the coil um, and we don't have any issues. I'd probably say the biggest issue for, um, airflow in a cold room is the people who operate the cold room store product um, on pallets or racking or whatever you know basically round the evaporator so that we are restricting the airflow getting to the back of the evaporator that's probably the most common problem that I see um, when I'm on site with cold rooms so uh, yeah it, the, the evaporator needs good airflow